Well, Norwich City win home games and Josh Sargent scores goals. Nothing new there, is there? Welcome back, everyone. Jack Reeve, talk Norwich City. Norwich City have beaten Sunderland by a goal to nil. Uh, recording this on Sunday morning. I think I've just about dried out. Um, before we get into reviewing the football, the weather. The weather. I couldn't, but I don't think I've ever seen rain like that. And if any of the maintenance crew at Carrow Road are watching this, can we please get the E-block roof fixed in the Lower Barclay? Um, I have walked out of showers drier than I walked out of Carrow Road yesterday. Thank goodness we won. Um, look, it was a... Going into this game, you know, we kind of said, didn't we, about the difference... Um, you know, the way the seasons have changed since we lost to Sunderland at the Stadium of Light, I thought they looked really impressive that day and I thought Norwich looked a long way off where we needed to be. And a couple of months on, you know, fortunes have changed um, for the worse for Sunderland. Um, I still don't think they're a bad side. I think they're very unfortunate with injuries at the moment. You know, the majority of their best players are out and anyone will miss um you know two or three big names like we've had this season and i think all teams do suffer with it and we've been through it and it's horrible um so that's uh, an issue i think they can probably wave goodbye to any top six chances now and that's surprising because i thought a couple of months ago that um, they would probably um you know had a real good shout for top six they're now eight points behind us um nine points behind hull that's a lot of ground to make up at this time of season, particularly with both ourselves and Hull um, going at a fairly decent points per game. So this felt like a game that we we needed to be winning. Um, our, there, there has been pressure heaped on our home performances because of our away form. Um, you know, our, our away form for the entire of this season hasn't been good enough. The draws in recent weeks against QPR and Blackburn have been frustrating more than anything. In both of those games, we've taken the lead and couldn't hang on. And the mentality around those away performances feel a little bit different, feel a little bit more negative. And look, you know, home compared to away, there will be differences. It feels like a real contrast in what we're seeing at the moment. So this was a game that we needed to win. The March games look kind and there is a real opportunity here to put together a serious run of form to try and sneak into that top six. Um, Hull drew yesterday. It means we're now only a point behind. Again, I've said this multiple times, but if I look at us compared to the other playoff contenders, I think our run-in is probably the nicest. There are a couple of tricky games in there. Ipswich, Leicester, although Leicester are <laughs> screwing things up at the moment. Um, but this, this f fixture list in March feels really kind, and this is a great way to start it. Um, there are a couple of changes, obviously, on El Hernandez is injured, which is a real shame. Christian Fasnacht started out on the right. The team that Wagner went with um, was the team that I would have picked. Hanley and Gibson at the back. Your new list, Stacey. Um, McLean, who apparently nearly didn't make the squad. He was unable to walk on Thursday, didn't train on Friday. And Wagner said that, um, you know, one of his rules is if you don't train on the Friday, you basically don't play. He made an exception with Kenny McLean and he has played every single minute of football for Norwich this season in a in a um you know varied um positions and he's looked brilliant wherever he's been played. I think if we if we if we were to make the vote for player of the season now, um Kenny McLean would get it for Norwich City. He's been brilliant and he's orchestrated so much of the good stuff that we've done and, and stood up and was counted when things weren't going so well so team was good look the, the first half was scrappy and you know without sounding I think it was Ty on Arsenal fan TV wasn't it when he made the excuse that the, the rain used to affect Arsenal um, I think the rain did affect the way that both teams played in that first half it was torrential it looked really difficult to get the ball under it was scrappy you know a nightmare for um, the midfielders to try and get the, the, the you know their foot on the ball and just get some kind of order on on proceedings um, it turned into a bit of a scrap and I think that would have played more into Sunderland's hands than it did ourselves it went into nil nil but despite having um, maybe things not go quite the way that we wanted them to it never felt like the game was out of our control it always felt like we were the ones making the moves, making the decisions. And that's felt like that at home for the last couple of months now, really. I've not once felt, um, in probably the last you know six games at Carrow Road, that things um, 
you know, the opposition are controlling the game, that they are the ones um, orchestrating proceedings. It, it's felt like Norwich have, have stamped their authority on um, these home games. Nil mil, fine. Not the, you know, not the greatest of first halves, but so often this season, Norwich have kind of come into their own in the second half of games. And, and, and that's what we did. I thought we looked better. The numbers were all in our favour. A couple of substitutions came. Um, Ashley Barnes came off for Van Hooydonk. I didn't think Barnes had, had had his best game, so that was a nice um, a nice move. Christian Fasnacht came off later on in the game for Liam Gibbs. Fasnacht, you know, actually has, has delivered when needed to this season, but I thought he was really poor, actually. Uh, against Sunderland, on came Liam Gibbs in that winger's role. And look, I don't think Liam Gibbs is a winger, but he provided a certain energy and an, an, an energy that we um, that we needed, and, and and that was good to see. Um, and then the goal came um, late on, um, eighty-one minutes on the clock, just as you felt like the game might start, to, you know, might start to peter out a little bit. And I think probably, if we're really honest, both teams maybe at that point would have settled for a point. It it felt scrappy. Um, up pops Josh Sargent with yet another bit of quality. It was a, a goal that Sunderland will probably be disappointed to have conceded. They had opportunities to clear the ball. They didn't. But Sargent still had work to do. It was a, a kind of ball put in from Gibson that tested um, defenders. But, you know, it was hardly a, on a plate for Josh Sargent. And he sort of headers it up. And then he finds a way to get it out and, and out of un, under his feet and just creates a half chance for himself. And he dispatches it with with authority and you know there's no coincidence that the the turnaround in Norwich City's form has correlated with the return of Josh Sargent this is a man who is far too good for the championship and I heard Connor Southwell say on his um on his review that there's not many complete strikers in the championship and I'd agree with that there's a couple um but nobody, I don't think, who has the all-round aura and ability that Josh Sargent has. He can head the ball. He's good on the floor. He holds it up. He's physical. He's quick. He is a nightmare to defend against. And you look at his minutes per goal ratio of the top four English leagues. He is ahead by an absolute country mile. Let's put this into perspective. Josh Sargent is currently scoring a goal every 89 minutes of football. Next best is Erling Haaland. He's scoring a goal every 103 minutes. Josh Sargent at the moment is the informed player, not just in the championship, but across all of the divisions in England. He is in the form of his life and still I don't think is fully fit. You know, I think there's more to come from Josh Sargent and I think our fortunes for the rest of this season will depend on if we can keep this man um, firing and, and fit. I think when he's on the pitch, even if he's not necessarily getting service, um, there are goals to be had. And, you know, I feel so much more confident that there will be successful times for Norwich when Josh Sargent starts. So so that was really pleasing. And it was a big, it was a big result, actually, because I think if we would have drawn against... Um, Sunderland then suddenly you know the away trip to Middlesbrough on um, on Wednesday night feels a little bit more nervy there would have still been that gap between us and Hull it would have felt like a missed opportunity and look there, there, there weren't huge margins between these two teams I think Norwich did deserve to win and I think we were just about the better side but I think if it had have ended nil-nil um then you know equally there wouldn't have been too many complaints we've edged this one and that feels pleasing because you know there's been times this season where we would have probably lost this type of game and actually now we are finding ways to win and our home form is remarkable and you look at the wins that we've had the last five home wins West Brom, Coventry, Watford, Cardiff and Sunderland well four of those sides West Brom, Coventry, Watford and Sunderland all have top six hopes um, and would have had top six hopes at time of playing them. So to, to to dispatch quite a few of those sides, you know, we're not beating Dross. Cardiff weren't great. But the other sides are, are, are no mugs. And, you know, we've put together a real run of form now. And that's propelled us into a position that, you know, there's real top six um, hopes. And, 
you know, I look at the fixtures. Yes, the away form hasn't been great. The next couple of away games are Middlesbrough and Stoke. Stoke are currently in the bottom three. Um, I don't think Borough are quite the team that um, we thought they might be this season. They've lost their last couple of games. I think it's just one win in their last six or seven. Um, so they're struggling. That feels like another opportunity. Look, it's not going to be easy. But if we can start to get a few away wins and you would bank on us to win our home games, you know, the next few home games um, are Rotherham and Plymouth then you can start to get excited, I think. If you can put together a run in March, and realistically, I think Wagner and his players will be looking at the next four games and wanting to win all four, Borough, Rotherham, Stoke, Plymouth, you will find yourself in the top six come the end of this month. And then you go into April with a little bit, hopefully, of a buffer, and it does get a little bit trickier. In April, So th this was a, a good start to the month. It was far from perfect, but it was professional. And um, look, the, the bench looked a little light. I think that's probably a concern. The injuries um, to Hernandez and, and Nunes haven't come at a great time, but hopefully we see sort of Nunes back soon. Um, nice to see um, Welsh and um, Abo on the bench, and hopefully they get um, some minutes from, from now until the end of the season. But this felt big. You know, this wasn't pretty, this wasn't glamorous. It's probably one of those games that um, in a couple of years' time, you know, someone goes, oh, can you remember the 1-0 the, the win against Sunderland? And you go, I honestly can't remember it, other than the rain, maybe. Um, but it's important. It feels like one of the more important wins of this season. And once again, Josh Sargent um, proves why he's the best striker in this division. Um, we will see you on Wednesday for the Middlesbrough game. Really looking forward to that one. Take care, enjoy the rest of the weekend, and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.